when you're living with moderate to severe Crohn's disease. There are times it feels like your life revolves around your symptoms. If you're tired of going around in circles, it may be time to ask your gastroenterologist about Humira, because with Humira, remission is possible. Humira has been proven to work for adults who have tried other medications but still experience the symptoms of moderate to severe Crohn's disease. In clinical studies, the majority of patients on Humira saw significant symptom relief and many achieved remission. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal events such as infections, lymphoma, or other types of cancer have happened. Blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and newer worsening heart failure have occurred. Before starting Humira, your doctor should test you for TB. Ask your doctor if you live in or have been to a region where certain fungal infections are common. Tell your doctor if you have had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have symptoms such as fever, fatigue, cough, or sores. You should not start Humira if you have any kind of infection. If you're tired of going around in circles, get headed in a new direction. Ask your gastroenterologist about Humira today. Remission is possible. are all free and because you cook without the shell you can add seasoning and ingredients before you boil now you can even hard boil healthy eggs from a carton and because eggies cook flat on the bottom they're easier to decorate and eat stop peeling all day and enjoy hard-boiled eggs the eggies way you'll get six eggies for just ten dollars as a bonus you'll get the eggie slicer just place and slice for perfect results every time. And here's something to get excited about. We'll send you a second complete Eggy system. Just pay separate processing and handling. To order Eggies for $10 plus processing and handling, call 1-800-496-0852 or visit us online at GetEggiesTV.com. Rule the world. But in the age of the superpower, where much of a nation's economic and military strength rests on the back of its navy, sea power must be versatile and multidimensional. We're a maritime nation. We're dependent on goods and resources transferred over the oceans, right? And so if we don't protect those passageways and free access globally, it impacts our economy, the global economy. Advanced technology has completely revamped the way the Navy does business. You know, the days of having 90 airplanes on an aircraft carrier, we don't have 90 airplanes on an aircraft carrier anymore, but we've got 44 strike fighters on an aircraft carrier that are very, very capable relative to the force that we had, say, 20 years ago. One such multi-purpose strike fighter is the F-18 Super Hornet. Originally introduced in 1983, the F-18 is the Navy's dogfighting weapon of choice. But over the years, the F-18 has been upgraded with so much technology and firepower that its current mission is to blast the enemy out of the sky before they can even get to the fight. What you saw in Takan was, you know, the close-in, dogfighting, and so on. We can still do that with the aircraft. It's extremely capable, but we're not doing the old night fight. Uh, the aircraft uh, has an extremely capable sensor suite that allows the aircraft to see many multiple targets far away and employ uh, weapons well beyond visual range. What sets the U.S. F-18 apart is an advanced electronic system that few other aircrafts can compete with. Our enemies are always going to be able to build things like we do, uh, but as long as we have information in our cockpit they don't have, we'll always have the advantage. against multiple targets, the ability to uh, operate with impunity anywhere we want to operate, that is their superiority. 
To remain a superpower, the U.S. needs to constantly update its technology and military hardware. While the F-18 has proven to be one of the best fighters on the planet, its operational days are numbered. A brand new asset, the F-35 Lightning, is ready to set a new standard for versatile jet fighters. F-35 will be another great uh, addition to our inventory. Right, three versions of the airplane, a Navy version, a Marine Corps version, and an Air Force version. It's going to replace the F-18, the AV-8, the A-10, the F-16, the F-117, and to some extent the F-15E. So it has big shoes to fill. We have different capabilities that are put together from all the different previous generations of airplane, and now you have a stealth capability. The F-35 will be the first um, truly stealth aircraft that the U.S. Navy's going to have on the, on the decks of, of their uh, carriers. The dynamic feature of the F-35 is its ability to take off from shorter runways and land vertically, just like a helicopter. We don't need a 10 or 12,000 foot runway. The F-35 with its short takeoff and vertical landing uh, capability provides the Marine Corps tremendous flexibility to operate from many bases that our uh, conventional aircraft cannot operate from. Additionally, it allows us to operate off of our L-class ships like the Macon Island. Flying the F-35 is absolutely amazing. Uh, you can think of having a roller coaster up at your job every day, go out and ride roller coasters, but you get a chance to do that in the F-35 every day. The F-35 is also outfitted with numerous targeting and advanced communication technologies, including a tactical data exchange system known as Link-16. Link-16 is what I would call the internet in the sky. It also includes the ground guys, the army is involved, the navy on ships. It is a tactical data link that has transformed how we fight. Link-16 technology allows real-time communication between aircraft, ships, and ground forces, providing a huge advancement in tactical air operations. The way it used to work before is we'd have to sit there literally with a pencil in my hand, flying the jet, writing down the target location, what the target is, the target altitude, and then it could literally take 20 minutes just to get through all of the coordination that can happen in a matter of seconds now. I mean, it's just awesome. The advantage of instant accurate information through Link 16 is twofold. Identifying the enemy and protecting your own forces from friendly fire. It also has increased our ability to ID and know who friendlies are. As she was trying to get behind the tombstone or past it, and she doesn't appear to have any legs. She's very close to the ground, and she's turning back, and she's she's looking directly at me. It made me feel strange that I had a spirit actually acknowledging that I was there also. When I saw this picture, I, I couldn't believe it. We were the only ones in that graveyard that night, and it was dark and it was late. It seemed like the apparition was turning around looking at us saying, here I am. Ever since then, John and I just, we just started going as often as we could, because it is definitely haunted. We try to go to the graveyard on moonlit nights. It seems like the activity at the graveyard is higher when the moon is out. Because we'll see shadow figures, we'll hear footsteps, whispering. There's a lot of things going on at this graveyard, and that's why we continue to go back. One night, John was walking, and he said, there's something following me. And I turned around, expecting to see something behind me, and there wasn't anything there. Bob took the picture, and that's when the orb appeared. Whatever spirit was there was either playing with me or trying to frighten me or maybe like me, but it was happening all night long. That just confirms to me that there are spirits, there are ghosts.
they're on scene, but they're there. The energy's there, and you could hear them, and you could feel them, but you just can't see them. A lot of times, I'll get touched or something, and it feels like a light spiderweb type feeling, and sometimes it's a deeper touch, like almost like electricity without the pain. As soon as I felt that, I'd ask for a photo to be taken, and things would be shown up in a photograph, so I knew there was something touching me. When I'm taking pictures during the night, night something will be there. It'll be ectoplasm or different anomalies. Once something touched the top of my head, my picture was taken, and there was an orb moving straight up. Finally, we were seeing shadow figures in the distance up next to the tree line. When I first saw the shadow figures, I had thought, well, maybe these are some high schoolers playing pranks on us, trying to frighten us. But there was no one else there. It was just us. And we saw these shadow figures crouching down several times. And each time we put our flashlights and to go look, there, was, there wasn't anyone there. I caught one photo of an orb. It was about 20 feet up in a tree. And it had some kind of face in it. It had eyes. And I couldn't make out the rest of the face, but it was definitely a face of some kind. I can't say it's human. It almost looks like some kind of animal. Since my first visit to the graveyard, Bob and I have been back many, many times. And we're going to continue going back because we're trying to figure out what's this all about. If anybody tells me this isn't real, you do have it on your own. And that graveyard will let you know that it is haunted. It almost feels like it's stalking us or something. It really scares me to see the shadow figures standing there because I don't know if it wants to harm us. That is the actual day that I became certain that the shop was haunted. My ghost story began when I opened a pet grooming business in Cumberland, Indiana. In my spare time, I am a canine handler. I have a bloodhound, and I do search and rescue, kind of my serious job, and the fun, goofy job is the dog grooming job. We opened in June of 1994. Everything started that first summer. The type of things that started happening were things moving, things falling off of shelves. We'd hear sounds, we'd hear noises, like people talking. We had dogs that were growling and barking and staring off into the distance when there was nothing there. One time I was working alone in the shop and I was grooming a dog on my table and out of the corner of my eye, I see there's a bottle and I saw the bottle just go flying across and it landed in the middle of the doorway. And I look over and I thought, where did that come from? It was as if something had come up and just flung it off like that. It really scared me because I couldn't explain it and nothing like that had ever happened to me before. That scared me to death. One night I was boarding a dog and I locked him in his cage for the night and I had, you know, secured him in there and made sure that I latched it and everything so that he couldn't get out and then I left. I came into the shop and it was in the morning and I see the dog. Oh my God, what is he doing out? And then I noticed the light was on in the room and I was freaking out because I didn't know how that dog got out of his cage, let alone how did he turn on the light and how did he shut the door and lock it. So I called my sister and I asked her, I said, why did you leave Max running loose in the room? I told her that I didn't, that I had latched the bottom lock and he was secured in there that he couldn't get out. No one else had been in that shop. That really scared us because we know that the dog didn't do it. That is the actual day that I became certain that the shop was haunted. The biggest thing we've had happen is a shadow in the hallway. Both have noticed it no matter where we're standing like in that room it's like almost like someone's watching us it almost feels like it's stalking us or something it, it really scares me to see the shadow figure standing there because I don't know what it wants I don't know if it wants to harm us when we do see it we tell each other we kind of know that we're not like losing it it's pretty scary actually thinking that something's there and we don't know who it is a lot of times when I'm alone I just want to hurry up and get done with my work and get out of there as quickly as possible. After so many things happened, 
at our shop that were just not adding up, we decided to finally call a paranormal investigation team. They set the cameras up, and I was not actually made aware of any of what they had captured until a few weeks later when they finished reviewing all of the tapes and the EVPs and the videotapes. I was totally shocked at some of the things that I heard and actually saw that they had captured on um, the camera. That really kind of freaked us out. The investigative team showed us a video and there was a...